What is going on everyone? Little Chi Chi here and welcome back to episode 51 of the RuneScape Pure Series. On today's episode, I'm going to show you guys how to solo both Rex as well as Prime Dagonoth Kings over at the DK's Lair. So let's get right into it. So before we get into the gear setup and before we get into the inventory setup, let's talk a little bit about the Dagonoth Kings and why you should um, solo them. Now, uh, the Dagonoth Kings are some of the monsters in the game that actually drops some of the best in slot rings that you can wear on any account build. Um, they drop Berserker Ring, Warrior Ring, uh, Seer's Ring, and the Archer's Ring for um, mo more notable ones. Now, of the three uh, Dagonoths, the two that I will be soloing will be Rex as well as Prime throughout my entire journey, uh, throughout this entire guide, um, as they are the two easiest ones to kill individually by themselves without having getting the attention of other bosses. And I'm doing it on a one defense account build. As you can see, one defense. Magic and range will be the primary use of the, uh, the method, so I'll go into detail about the uh, gear setup right now. So something you should know while in the Dagonoth King lair um, are monsters within the lair that will constantly attack you. Those are the uh, they're called Spinaliths. Um, Spinaliths will constantly deal damage to you. However, the way that their damage is calculated onto a player is that even though it is a magic based attack, it rolls off of your range defense. So in this particular method, it's actually better to use um, defense armor that is high in range than it is mage so that's kind of the reason why i'm wearing the armor that you see here and i'll go into a little bit about this, the calculations and different um, specifications for why i picked out the armor set so um, again as a one defense peer i am really limited on the options i can actually wear for overall best range defense bonus um and this is pretty much the best ideal uh setup that i can really think about again i've gone through a few different um uh, variants of this thing and I've been tested out multiple times at Dagonoth and I feel like this is the perfect combination of both prayer as well as um, overall range defense bonus. I am using the bear head. I did think about using the uh, Zamorak in Halo. Uh, it does provide prayer bonus um, and overall decent um, defense bonus. However, as you can see, I am only get 109 uh, defense bonus. However, if I use the bear head, that 109 range defense bonus turns to 119, so an extra plus 10. Um, additionally, I am using the Varrock Armor 1. This is actually completed by doing the Varrock uh, Easy Diaries, and it's actually overall a really great um, uh, option for using over and the lair. Now, if we compare this armor set to the decorative um, armor top you get from Castle Wars, it does provide overall great defense bonuses. However, for that range, you're only getting 108 defense bonus, and the Varrock Armor, you're getting that 119. Again, it's gonna help a little bit with that tankiness. Going into the, uh, the, the legs slot, really just any type of um, God Chap uh, is actually really preferred for this um, since peers are allowed to wear it. Ranger Boots is a really great option. I am opting in for the Fury. Alternatively, I wanted to opt in for something a little bit more tankier. So for my method, I did prefer using the Fury over any other uh, necklace. I'm using the Ranging Cape T. Since this method, I will be uh, ranging uh, Dagonoth Prime. Uh, it was, you know, really preferred to use a cape that, um, you know, that saved my ammo. And not to mention, this cape provides prayer bonus and actually pretty decent um, defense bonus as well. It's giving me a plus nine and just my overall defense bonus. So, so it wasn't actually too bad. For the weapon slot, I'm switching between a few different weapons. Um, I'm going to be using a Twisted Bow as well as the uh, uh, just a regular Trident. Um, so it doesn't really affect my defense bonuses at, at all. However, from my uh, offhand slot, I am using a holy book. Now, this is the Saradoman book. I prefer this one just because of the insane defense bonus it gives my account. It gives me a plus eight, which is actually pretty decent. If you compare this to other books uh, in the game, uh, it doesn't provide me nearly as high as defense bonus with a plus eight. And not to mention, it gives me a plus five in prayer as well. So it's pretty decent. Alternatively, um, you could, you know, if you wanted to maybe switch to a mage's book, which I have here. However, we are not gaining any of that defense bonus. It's only going to be at that 111. So it's ideally for me, not entirely preferred. 
Um, I, I prefer something with a little bit more tankiness and, and a mage's book is not going to give you any prayer bonus. Alternatively, alternatively, you can use maybe something like an iron kite shield, uh, something that's a little bit more tankier. Um, it's only going to give you that plus one range bonus. So it is one plus better, um, than the, uh, the holy book. However, you're not benefiting at all by the, uh, the prayer bonus at all. So I do recommend using that holy book. Um, as it gives really great defense bonuses as well as prayer for the uh, glove slot I am using the regent bracelet it gives me a really great uh, passive effect of being able to heal uh, a little bit faster in hit points Which is really nice um, and I prefer that uh, alternative you can use the Guthix bracers if you'd like however um, It's you know, it is giving me a little bit of prayer bonus, but the t uh, the range defense bonus I'm only at 113 versus versus the uh, the regent bracelets give me an extra plus six in the defense bonus so I prefer that as well uh, and then the last two, I am using uh, Amethyst Arrows for my Twisted Bow. Um, if you're using, you can use the Bow of Fair Denon. That's another option. Or if you're using a crossbow, that's perfectly fine. You can use any bolt you'd like. And then lastly, I am using the Ring of Suffering. If I did imbue the ring, I would actu actually have a much higher defense bonus. I think being closer to like, uh, 120s or uh, maybe 130. If I am not really sure in the exact calculations. I do know that the, the bonuses are, are doubled. So... That is pretty much it for the overall equipment setup. And like I said, I did a lot of testing just to make sure that this was the best um, uh, best defense bonus uh, for doing Dagonoth Kings, which is really great. All right, so let's go into inventory setup. What are the ideal items and then required items you're going to need to bring for Dagonoth Kings? I've tried this many times and I feel like I pretty much perfected the exact utilization of items. Uh, items for restore items for overall weapons this is ideally the setup that you want to bring and i'll show you guys alternative options for this so the first one i am using a master wand and the master wand is going to be responsible for the blood barrages so um throughout the entire cave you're able to heal off the spindle lifts additionally i am using the trident of the seas so whenever my hp is pretty much full and max i don't want to really waste a whole lot of money on uh on blood barrages i will switch over into the trident and the trident will allow me to deal pretty decent passive damage over to rex um and, and chewing him down for for hp the next couple items that are required are the rune throwing axe i'll show you guys the specifics in a bit but you pretty much need a rune throwing axe for this particular method as well as a pet rock now <laughs> a pet rock this is an item that you can actually get from completing part of Fremnik Trials. Um, so all you have to do is start the quest, and I think it's about 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes into the quest. However, if you're soloing Dagonoth Kings, the pet rock is a must. And lastly, I am rocking the infamous Twisted Bow. However, you can replace this with maybe a Bow of Fair Dinan. You can replace this with like an Armor and a Crossbow. Um, really, anything that's a decent long range, you can even use a Crystal Bow if you're interested, but I do prefer a weapon that has a long range, but I do recommend using this as an optimal weapon. Um, and then lastly, let's go over into the just the brews and stuff like that. Uh, I do recommend about 10 Sarah brews. As a one defense pure, you will get damaged, not by the Dagonoths themselves, but by the Spindelifts within the area. So I do recommend bringing a good amount of, of healing, as well as uh, about eight resources, pretty much ideal. And then the last, two, uh, the last four items, I'm bringing a rune pouch for all my runes. I'm bringing a quick one click teleport, which is my teleport to house. I have a two dose of sand and potion. You're going to need to run a quite a bit just to get into the Dagonoth areas however you don't need a full four dose you, all you really need is just a two dose so I recommend that and then lastly an antidote plus plus and that's pretty much it so now I'm just going to go into the actual how to get there so the best way that I found to get there is pretty much going into world 330 uh, world 330 is a world that you can use other people's POA just the uh, the party house room whatever it's called and uh, you can pretty much go to Remington uh, house portals and go to anyone's house so I'm just going to go really quick into someone's poh and use their um their item the the area that i need to access oh wow my, my fps is dropping like crazy i want to use the portal nexus in someone's poh just because i don't have access to this in my own poh but you pretty much want to teleport over to the water birth island once you're here in the water birth island you get teleported to this area and this is where we'll go ahead and start the method of how to get over to the dk's layer so again uh, once you teleport uh, using the water birth teleport, head over west, and then we're going to go all the way, I think, if we look at the map right here, we're trying to get all the way to this area right here, to the water birth dungeon, so let's get over there really quick. Alright, and before going into the cave, drink one dose of your stamina, and we'll get this started. 
So as you're in the cave, I'll kind of point the direction north so you guys can see which way I'm going. So you pretty much want to walk all the way uh, east into the lair and we'll go ahead and start this method off. But you'll see a, a ton of DKs. Just put on your protect from melee and you won't get damaged by any of them. You'll see this little door, this little gate. Get through the gate. All you need to do is have two people here or if you have a pet rock, you can use that there. So we're going to drop a pet rock. Drop it right there. Stand on the other plate and then we open the door and it allows us to get right through. If you want to leave your pet rock, you can. Um, you may have to get more in the future, but I always like to bring mine just in case. Um, I prefer not to ha get that stupid method of collecting a bunch of pet rocks, so that's pretty much it. In this particular method, now on this part, you're just going to run, you're going to keep running east. And then from there, you're going to put on your special attack as well. The special attack is a must and required to get through this area. You cannot get in through the, uh, the door support unless you use a spec. So you are going to equip your Rune Throne Axe, and then you're going to also use the spec, and you're going to hit this particular door support here on the west side. So we're going to go ahead and spec it now. All right, all three doors went down. Go down, and then we'll put on our, our Protect for Magic. There we go. We're going to get. We're not going to get hit by this room. All right, in this room, I think we have to protect from range. Some of the DKs or the Dagonoffs hit uh, with both magic, uh, with both range and melee, so it's kind of hard to tell. So after that, you pretty much run south. Again, I'll point my direction. And then you're going to run west. After we run west, put on our protect from magic because there's a bunch of seals at the bottom. Go west, and then we're going to go down south. We're going to go into this little ladder here, and then we're going to put on, I think it's mage. Nope. Oh, it's still mage. Oh, oh but I'll die. There we go. <laughs> Thankfully, I didn't get hit, but yeah, so that um, that was still mage on that particular room. After this, you're going to run all the way east. I'm actually going to heat eat up just a little bit. And as you can see, my stamina first dose just ran out as well. So I can actually take the last sip of my stamina potion right now. All right, so I'm going to put on my tech from range. Keep running that east. See a ton of these DKs are going to attack me. They switch between range and melee, so it's kind of hard. You kind of have to just pick one and just hope that you pick the right um, uh, one to pray against. Keep your protect from range, and then this will be the last room right here. And you pretty much just want to throw out the protect from melee. All of the last, the, the last room before you enter the main area, it's going to be just uh, melee. All right, so now that we've made it throughout majority of the cave keep on that protect from melee melee on just for a little bit longer and you're going to run south keep running south eventually we're going to put on our protect from mage because there's a few more seals up ahead all right after i pass this one yep I'm throw my protect from mage all right now that we've made it pretty much all the way to the very end of the dk's area i'm going to go ahead and hit this step over root and now we've successfully made it all the way. Down this ladder will be the Dagonoth King's Ladder, and that's pretty much where we'll need to go. So this particular method that I'm about to show you, it's a little scary, but don't worry. I've done this many times, and if you are very careful about it and you're very um, calculated about your steps, you shouldn't have any worries about this. So the method I like to do is it's called the X-Log, and you pretty much are going to basically... Uh, close out your browser for this particular method. Uh, I'll show you guys really quick how this method works. So we're going to go ahead and um, so we're going to start by peeking into the crack to see how many people are in here. Great. It shows that there's two adventurers here. So we know in world 330, there's two people in this particular world. So I'm going to go ahead and find a world that's completely empty. So let's try 339. All right, perfect. So our first world we hopped into, 339, is completely empty as we look and we peek at the crack. There's no adventurers in the Slayer or the Standard Cave. Perfect. So we're going to go back to the world that we know has two people in it, and then we'll go ahead and start the method off. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and equip my magic uh, based attack weapon, and I can pretty much th uh, toss the rune throwing axes on the ground. I've already eaten all the way up to full HP. Um, I'm going to put up my protect from magic, and I'll go ahead and get this method started. We're going to step over the root. And I, I like to pray, pray against magic as the prime is the hardest hitting um, monster within the area. As we can see, we're hit, getting hit by Rex. So whilst in the DK's lair, um, you will get attacked for, by maybe one of the DK's. Um, the, the green one, Dagonoth Supreme, will hit you by range attacks. 
uh, Dagonoth Prime, one that you just saw uh, get killed over there, is using uh, Mage base attacks, and, and then Rex will attack you with its melee base attacks. So I'm actually not trying to ruin these two's, um, these these players' uh, rotation, because you do have to kill uh, the Dagonoth in a particular method, but I'm actually not attacking it. I'm just allowing it to uh, deal damage to me. I'm going to actually mosey on over here. All right, so while in the cave, I'm going to run all the way east into the very eastern side of the cave. I see there's, uh, there's one guy attacking Rex. He's not a problem to me. I'm not a problem to them. And actually, what I'm going to do is going to be a little dangerous, it seems, but it, trust me, I've done this many times. I'm actually going to brew up all the way. So I'm just a little over max HP. I'm going to go ahead and heal myself a little bit. And I'm going to actually hit the X button. <laughs> Are you sure you want to exit? Yes. So I've completely, without... I've, I've pretty much just force quit my game and I'm actually gonna reload the client right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into that known world 336 that was available before that I knew there was no known players in there. All right, I'm gonna go into world 336 and I'm gonna log in. All right, perfect. I did the method flawlessly. So as you guys saw right there, I pretty much X logged, which meant I force quit the game. Um, I left without any, uh, uh, with the game still on, and my account was pretty much just uh, just chilling there, um, you know, uh, being attacked. So uh, unfortunately, you can't just log out just because the spindle lifts are attacking you. So that's why I had to do the X log method. Now, uh, what I'm going to be doing here is I'm just going to be safe spotting the uh, Dagonoth Rex. Quickly put on my tech for a mange. And I am standing on the more uh, eastern side of the area. So all I have to do is stand on this spot right here. I'll go ahead and mark the tile right here. Once I stand on this tile right here, uh, which is pretty much the southeastern part of the room right here. Once I get in behind this little area, I'm pretty much good to go to keep protecting from uh, from magic. And uh, get not attacked by the uh, spin lifts. So I'm actually uh, blood barraging Rex and uh, healing up a little bit because I was dealt quite a bit. Oh my gosh, look at all these spin lifts right here. I wonder if I can actually attack them right here. So on this particular method, all I'm doing right here is healing up a little bit while being able to t kill Rex. It's completely safe spotted, which is super ideal for this method. Again, with my ranged defense bonus, I'm really not taking a whole lot of damage from the spin lifts, but more will spawn throughout the entire time of being here. So um, it's kind of a hit or miss how often I'm getting dealt and how much damage I'm being dealt. But being able to heal is really, really nice. All right, now that we've killed Rex, uh, we can go ahead and pick up those bones, get a little bit of GP. Uh, I'm going to actually just brew up just slightly, go up a little bit, this, put in my range, and I'm actually going to uh, safely attack Prime from this location right here. So hopefully I'm going to stand back just a little bit. I don't want to get Supreme's attention. He shouldn't bother me if I run a little bit right here. All right, there we go. There we go. So if you notice that Prime is a little bit too close to the center, you can go ahead and run all the way east and that'll bring him a little bit closer to where you ideally want him. So in this particular spot that I have marked tiled right here and there, uh, these are pretty much the ideal spots. You don't want to cross anything further because you might attract the attention of Supreme within the room. But um, yeah, it's pretty simple. Uh, you're pretty much keeping your uh, Protect from Magic on the entire time. These spindle lifts, as you can see, are dealing damage to you left and right. So having your Protect from Magic on is ideal for this entire method. And you can safely attack Prime all the way uh, using your uh, Bow of Fair Dinan, Twisted Bow if you have access to it. Um, pretty much it. And that's pretty much it. So yeah, so now we've su successfully killed Rex as well as Prime. And you're pretty much just going to, uh, you know, go ahead and maybe if you want to heal a little bit on these spindle lifts. Since they're clustered together like this, I'm actually being able to heal a little bit more. As you can see, look, double healing right there. Just until Rex spawns, I'll get his attention. I'll lure him back all the way east. Again, I'm probably going to throw up the protect for melee a little bit. Wait till he gets a little bit closer to me. Run over to the south spot. Put back my protect for magic. And now I'm good to go. Additionally, these spindle lifts will actually also drain your prayer as well. So keep that in mind. You'll get dealt quite a bit throughout the entire time. I see there's only one spindle lift on me. So I'm going to go ahead and switch into my trident. And uh, I'm actually going to deal my damage like that to him right now. Now, what I really like about the Dagonoth Kings is that they actually drop some of the rarest pets in the entire game. Each of the pets within the Dagonoth Kings are actually 1 in 5,000, and they're all unique to the one that they have. So if you kill Prime, you will get the Prime uh, uh, pet, which is super cool. Same thing with Rex as well. But overall, it's a really simple method. There's not a whole lot to it. 
But I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Um, I do enjoy uh, uh, killing the Dagonauts. I probably en will end up doing this a lot more in the future, just having a chance at the pet. Um, but yeah, so something that I've been just kind of doing in the background passively, and I'd like to share this method out with you guys. So if you're interested in soloing both Prime as well as Rex, try this method. Uh, additionally, if you're interested, please make sure to follow me on Discord as well. I, I just started up my own Discord where I'm able to talk to a lot of you guys. Uh, something that I haven't been able to do in the past, but now that I have the time and freedom, uh, you can message me on Discord there. Lastly, feel free to join my uh, clan chat. Uh, so, you know, it's a really great opportunity and place for me to talk to you guys. Like I mentioned, my friends list is pretty much capped out at 400 out of 400, so I can't really uh, add any new new players to the list. So alternatively, if you'd like, join the clan chat, talk with the boys, and then also join the Discord so I have another chance to talk to you guys there as well um, so we can actually, uh, you know, communicate. And, and if you have any questions, if you want to show off your cool fashion scape, or if you just have uh, any questions about anything, just feel free to uh, ask me there on Discord. But Aside from that, I really hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. It was a whole lot of fun to film this. Uh, it is a grind that I anticipate just doing kind of passively in the background, hoping I get a chance at the pet. And uh, yeah. But aside from that, I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. I hope you guys have the best of luck killing Dagonoth. And of course, I'll catch you guys on the next one.